Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with celery root puree. That's right, I love the roots, both the band and the category of produce. And when it comes to root vegetables, I think celery root is by far the most interesting and delicious, which I realize is not saying a whole bunch, but still this is a totally underappreciated food. And since we just used it on our now famous pork belly video, I wanted to show you how to work with this very cool and incredibly ugly product. Okay, this end is where those stalks of celery would have come out. And then of course the other end would be the root end. So let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we're gonna go ahead and remove the skin, which as you can see is extremely gnarly and not the good surfer type gnarly. We're talking gnarly gnarly. So we're not gonna use a peeler, we're gonna use a knife for this. So we'll start by cutting off both ends. And then once we have that done, we'll take the knife and simply shave down the sides like this, removing that rough and fairly unattractive exterior. But don't worry, the inside's gonna be almost as unattractive. So we'll go around and we'll trim all that skin off. And then let's split this in half so we can start cutting it up. And like I said, the inside's not gonna win any beauty contests either. So you may very well see a little bit of that brown discoloration. Although technically I think it's just coloration, but whatever, it's not a problem. And then we'll cut our half in half and then that in half and continue until we have pieces about that size. And you know the drill, the exact size really doesn't matter as long as these are all the same size. That way they will cook evenly. So uniformity here is much more important than conformity. So you don't necessarily have to do it the same size I'm doing it, just as long as you pick a size and stick with it. And as I'm cutting these, I'm gonna transfer them into a saucepan filled with some water, some nice cold fresh water. And then once our celery root has been cut up, we're simply gonna boil it till tender, but we are gonna add a couple things first. We're gonna to toss in some kosher salt, or any salt for that matter, and the juice of half a lemon. And at that point, we'll bring that over to the stove, put it on medium high heat, bring it up to a simmer, and simply cook this until it's very tender. And how long that takes is gonna depend on how big your pieces were. And of course you're gonna test with the old polka polka. So we'll take a fork or a knife, and we'll give these a test when we think they're getting close. And when I say very tender, I mean very, very tender. See right here, they were pretty good, kinda tender, but not very, very tender. So I let them go for a few more minutes, and then I came back to give them another poking. And at this point they were very soft, not falling apart, but nice and soft. And at that point, we're gonna stop, turn off the heat, and drain these very, very thoroughly. So toss them into some kind of strainer and let them sit there draining for a good five or six minutes, at which point we can transfer these into a blender because we wanna blend this puree very, very smooth. Okay, a potato masher isn't really gonna cut it here. So we will transfer that into a blender. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a few more things to make this even more delicious. The first of which would be a nice big chunk of butter. And I know that's kind of hard to see. It's almost the same color as the vegetable. Why, why did I decide to use celery root colored butter for this video? And then we're also gonna add a little splash of milk or cream, just enough so this will blend. And then we'll bring that over and we will blend until completely, completely smooth. And you've done this before. You might have to pulse on and off to get it started. You may have to stop a couple times and scrape it down and mix it up with a spatula. Okay, you can also add a little more cream or milk if you want. And then this move right here, where I shake the blender while it's running, we'll put that under the do not try this at home category. I mean, to be honest, I didn't read the manual, but I'm assuming that's not recommended. But one way or another, you're gonna puree this smooth and it should look something like that. And besides final seasoning, that's pretty much it. You could use it just like this, but there is one optional mandatory step. I highly suggest we pass this through a fine mesh strainer, the same one we used to drain it. Hey, it's already dirty. So we'll transfer that in and we'll use a spatula to push that against the screen. And at first, just some liquid will come through and you'll be like, hey, this is not working. What's the deal? But don't worry, keep pushing and scraping that mixture against the screen. And you'll see most of it will go through and eventually when no more wants to go through, you're done. And what you'll be left with is a very beautiful, very luxurious celery root puree that's gonna have a little nicer, a little finer mouthfeel than if we didn't strain it. Okay, so like I said, up to you. You are the Daddy Mac of your celeriac. And speaking of crisscross, let me go back across the kitchen and grab that other half a lemon. And we'll finish off the final flavorings. So I'm gonna squeeze in that other half a lemon. We're also gonna want a salt to taste, which simply means add enough till you like how it tastes. And then last but not least, a little pinch of cayenne. That never hurt anything. And once you mix that up and it's tasting good to you, it's done. Simply keep that warm on the back of the stove until you're ready to use it. So you can make this ahead, reheat it on low. You could even pop it in the microwave for a minute. That works too. Of course, you know I served mine with some crispy pork belly, which was just a mind-blowingly good combination. But this stuff is pretty much great with any kind of roasted meats, which means that timing's perfect to serve it with things like that Thanksgiving turkey or the holiday ham. Just a really beautiful pairing. 
And if you've never had it before and are wondering what it tastes like, I think the best description would be, it tastes like celery if celery tasted good. Okay, so it has a similar flavor, but it's very mild, slightly sweet, a little bit earthy, just very, very delicious. And not to mention the texture is very mashed potato-like, which is kind of funny because celery root is only like 5% starch. Oh yeah, all the paleo people kind of just sat up a little straighter in their chairs. But if you are cutting down on the carbs a little bit, this is a beautiful alternative to the potato. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.